Here's the studio set up and ready to do a third version of the oak tree painting, this time using oil colour. First one you can see over here, which is the watercolour. Uh, second one is there, there's the acrylic painting that I did in the uh, previous video. And today we're going to use artisan water mixable oil colour. Water mixable because it means you can uh, wash your brushes in water rather than solvent and you can mix the paint a little with water as well. Some people prefer water soluble oil colour because um, they don't like the smell of solvents or they're allergic to solvents. They behave in a very similar way to traditional oil paint. Um, they dry, if anything, a little bit more slowly than traditional oil paint and certainly much more slowly than alkyd paint, which is another of the uh, types of oil paint that I like to use. I've got out lemon yellow. It's a similar range of colours as I've used in the watercolour and the um, acrylic painting. I've got French ultramarine, phthalo blue, but this time burnt umber. And there's a tube of white, titanium white as well. I know many of you haven't got exactly the same colours that I've got, but it doesn't matter. You should be able to produce your own version, and this is an opportunity to explore the colours and how the colours work. Other tools I've got around are, um, I've got a, a couple of knives, these are painting knives, the ones with the angled blade, which I like to use either for um, mixing the paint on the palette with, or applying to the canvas and or scraping paint off the canvas. So I'll be using a mixture of these and brushes, which I've got um, just a small handful of brushes and I might not use all of these, but I tend to pick out brushes that either have like a, a worn away profile like that, or this shape, which is called a, a filbert, which has a rounded end. I just like the kind of marks those brushes make. I have got a round brush as well, which I anticipate using for the branches and some smaller soft brushes which are generally sold for watercolours or acrylics <clears throat> but you can use them for oil paint as well when it's thinned down which are going to be handy for painting the finer twigs. Uh, I find myself picking up or, or having available quite a lot of the Pro Art, Pro Art or Pro Arte, I'm not sure how it's pronounced seem to be a, a good quality, long-lasting brush made by ProArt. The uh, exception in this handful is this um, Winsor & Newton artist's hog, it's called. These bristles are made from hog's hair. Uh, all of these are natural hair brushes. Actually, maybe except for that one, I think this is a, this is a ProArt. It's called Sterling for oils or acrylics, and I think that's a synthetic one by the look of the uh, bristles. I think the reason why um, oil painting brushes have tended to stay with natural hair, with hog's hair, is because it withstands washing in solvent better than the synthetic brushes. But if you're using water mixable oil colour, then that, that might be all right just to use synthetic brushes, which I think a few people are preferring to do these days with more awareness of animal welfare. Uh, around here as well is a palette, well used old palette. You can see I use quite a lot of green and blue. Uh, some uh, oil painting medium, which is just a liquid, which uh, helps the paint to, to load on the brush and alters the consistency of it, makes it easier to paint out. You can use it straight out of the tube, but I usually use it thinned out a little bit with medium, which is usually a mixture of oil and thinners. <coughs> and in this case, <coughs> it's the uh, water mixable thinners, which are formulated to go with these paints. A rag. Wiping my hands, wiping my brushes, and a pad with some colour out on it, which I'm beginning to explore some mixtures of the colours that I'm going to be using in the painting. 
So I'll show you what I'm doing here. Um, I've got a little daub of each colour out. Number one, that's the, uh, the burnt umber. Two, the thalo blue. Three, ultramarine. Four, lemon yellow. And there's my um, titanium white. So with each of these, I'm going to mix each of these with each other. And I've started off here with number four and number three. Four plus three. And I've got three mixtures of those two colours. So in the middle, I've got a green, which is midway between those two in, in its quality. On this side, I've got a more bluey green. And on that side, I've got a more yellowy green. And each time I've also mixed them out with some white. And in doing this exercise, you can find out about the sort of innate translucency or opacity of each of the colours as well. And I'm finding that the ultramarine is quite translucent and as is the lemon yellow and it's producing quite a translucent green. You see I'm um, doing this exercise using a little knife which is much easier than using a brush because you can, each time you do a bit of mixing you can just wipe it off with a rag instead of having to wash the brush off the mixture. So to make the mid-green, I'm going to need to wipe the knife, take some more yellow, This is a nice, um, slow exercise you can do. You don't need to rush this. It's a really good way to explore these colours. Wipe the knife again. Get a bit more yellow. And try and produce a much more yellowy green here. I'm just going to take a little bit of that from the middle mixture. To that yellow, see if I can get a clearer difference between the uh, the middle green and this more yellowy green. So this will teach you about balancing the colours against each other in terms of the strength of each colour, as well as exploring whether the colour is more opaque or more translucent. Okay. Thinking I could take that, put that into the middle now. I want to see more of a difference between the middle one and the darker one here. So I can go backwards and forwards. And then also, each one of these, I'm going to mix some white. I'm not giving myself a lot of room there, but I'll just have to. See what I can do. Okay. Just right into that one. I can compare this green to that green. Quite. Um, effectively. And in the green here, which was mixed with ultramarine rather than fallow blue, it's made a slightly warmer green than here. So it's mixed those lemon yellow and fallow blue make a very cool, clean green. The one with the ultramarine, because ultramarines are slightly more purpley blue. Uh, there's a wee bit of red sort of hiding in it, which makes the green slightly warmer and slightly less um, less pure, I suppose. I just thought I'd show you the colour mixing exercise before it's quite finished, where you can see the mixtures of the blues and the brown have made, uh, well, almost black. 
can only see the difference between these ones here when they're mixed out with white and you make some, you've got some nice greys, some warm greys, some cool greys. But it's an amazing the variety of different colours you can get just from mixing pairs of each of those. And of course you can then modify those colours by adding three colours, three of those colours together. Here's my white canvas, which I've decided to stain blue to paint on so that any gaps in the paint show the colour blue rather than having white areas of canvas showing. You don't have to do this, but I'm just showing you how I can how I stain the canvas first with a bit of acrylic paint, phthalo blue acrylic paint. Or you could use any blue really. And I'm just mixing it with a little drop of water so that I can paint it on really thinly. So just brushing it on nice and quickly. It doesn't really matter about uh, getting it particularly smooth. I just want to get rid of the white canvas. So, nice and blue all over. Putting the brush in some water so the acrylic paint doesn't dry on the paintbrush. And I'm just using a piece of paper towel to wipe off some of the paint. I didn't want it to be too dark. Now it's dry. So here I'm just putting out some of the Artisan Water Mixable oil painting medium that goes with the paint I'm going to use. So here's some lemon yellow. It's a really thick lemon yellow. I um, don't know whether it's because it's an old tube and it's gone a little bit thick. Sometimes this does happen. But it's um, you can see me putting some of the, the water mixable oil painting medium next to it and just blending it in with my palette knife. Makes it easier to mix with the other colours which are already a little bit looser. I was just putting a tiniest dot of phthalo blue in. I want it to be that limey green, that very bright fresh yellowy green of uh, where the sun is catching in the highest leaves of the tree. If you can, if you look on the, um, uh, to the bottom left of the canvas, you can see my phone propped up with the photograph in it. That's the, um, the screenshot from the video that I was talking about earlier. That's what I'm working from. I'm not working from the painting that you can see to the left there. That's the acrylic painting that I did last time. So when you're seeing me painting, I'm, my visual reference is on the phone. And what I'm doing to begin with is just painting patches of where I can see those lightest leaves. Although the canvas is blue, that's not really the sky as such. It's just giving me a colour to see my other colours against and to avoid having any white bits of canvas showing at the end of the painting. But what I'm going to do is paint all the greens on, so starting with the lightest green and working down through the, the values of green to the darkest green. Then I'll paint the um, some of the trunks and branches in and then paint the sky into the gaps. I'm just speeding up a little bit here. In fact what I've got now is another green, it's slightly, slightly more blue than the first green I started with. Starting to mix the, the much darker shades of green now. So I had that very bright limey green, then a slightly more blue green, and now I'm mixing my um, mid-tone of green, trying it out with the small brush there. Hmm, maybe that's a little bit too dark. Yeah, there we are. I've mixed it slightly lighter now. So it's quite a time-consuming process. I'm, I'm looking carefully at the different patches of green in the photograph and painting them approximately where I identify that they are. This is an interpretation, not a slavish copy of the photograph. And here's the 
um, almost the darkest tone of green you'll see me use. Keeping the corners dark is one of it's a, an old trick in painting. If you keep, if you avoid having anything bright in the corners of a composition, it helps to focus the attention in within the picture area. There we go. This is about the darkest tone of green, going in these deep shadows. That's the ultramarine. Ultramarine and burnt umber, lovely mixture to make coloured blacks, coloured greys. Black by itself can sometimes just look a little bit, I don't know, too nothing. Whereas if you make a black out of a brown and a blue, then you can adjust it and make it either cooler or warmer according to your need. Makes much more beautiful and natural greys when you put a bit of white in as well. So using a um, the, th the thinner brush, so far I've just used two brushes. This one I started off painting the small areas of leaves with. Then I used the bigger brush to paint the, the bigger patches of shadowy leaves. And this one, it's, a, it's just a flat brush quite short bristles and um, this is quite slow this part you can see quite a lot of um, thinking going on with the hesitation and I'm referring closely to shapes that the branches make and how they react how they how they uh, relate to each other When you're painting trees, you, to, you can't invent randomness. There's nothing like looking at a real tree to find out how to paint trees. You're really not one for following formulas. I mean, you, you, can, you can you can learn a lot, I suppose, as a beginner from following somebody else's version of a tree that's a generic tree. But uh, you learn far more about oh, what something really looks like by painting what's in front of you. Makes you sit and look and work things out. You know, why are there brighter patches? What happens when the light shines in through those gaps in the tree? And I've mixed some white into the grey now because just here on this main bough there's some light shining in through one of those um, those gaps. Those trees are, it's like they've got windows in them, I think. In the middle of the tree, you've got dark shadow. Um, but the gaps allow the light in, like, like letting light in through the windows. Um, giving the brush a good wash out with water. Need to change the colour. Use the same brush for... Another colour. What's this? This is going to be sky, isn't it? Thallow blue. I'm just putting a small amount of thallow blue into the white. This is quite tricky to do if you're painting up to a dark colour like that. It's easy to pick that colour up on the brush and then it can, um, it can mix in with the pale colour you're using and make it well muddy or not the colour you want it to be. So I'm trying to be very decisive about how I put the colour down and as I said before not move it around on the surface too much because I don't want the colours here to mix together. There we are, I skipped a little bit then just so that you didn't get too bored watching me putting patches of blue on and I'm back with the, the pale yellow which I'm Putting in next to some of those patches of sky and just doing general ad adjustment and painting that final corner in there. Sometimes working from a photograph you can see too much and it would be tempting to 
to try and actually paint individual leaves but I'm just trying to find a way of creating almost a language that describes the leaves. A whole branch I missed out earlier, so there it goes. Goes behind some leaves and then it appears again. paint the leaves in that it's going to disappear behind. I'm just trying out some marks here. It looks a bit like a moustache, that. <laughs> just trying out some marks to um, imply that there are some leaves that are much closer to, uh, like I said before, not trying to paint each individual leaf, but just to try and create an impression that some areas of the leaves are much closer to us, while others are further away. So bigger marks for leaves nearer to, and smaller marks for leaves that are further away. Um, here we are, this is much the, the smaller, thinner brush I'm using now is um, it's, it's just a soft watercolour brush and I've used more medium with the paint to thin it down so that it feeds onto that softer brush more easily just to paint some really wispy little twigs in. Sometimes they do go off in unexpected directions so maybe there's a little branch going away from you. Some coming towards, some going away, and some going right and left, and at every point of the compass in between. I'm looking for that much lighter grey now because there's a few areas on the, the smaller branches where the light has crept in through the windows. It's just illuminating those little bits of the, the branches there. Prevents them from becoming too, um, too like too much like a silhouette. Each of those, of course, is a three-dimensional shape. So just those little flecks of light catching on them help to stop them looking quite so flat. sort of finished. Little bits I might come back to later on but I wouldn't want to do too much detail in that. 